Hello again. We wanted to continue from what we talked about last week, this week. And what that was, was that food is not the issue. Yeah. And basically what we were saying in that is that if we have a health condition or if we're overweight, you can't seem to get that last 10 pounds or extra weight off. It hasn't been our experience that people don't know what to do in order to resolve the situation, but that they override what they know to do, and we all have done it. Um, I'm sure. With um, that desire to have that immediate relief, uh, to have that immediate experience of what that food will give us. So when we say food is not the issue, it's not like what we're eating isn't creating the problem. I guess what we're saying is that the real issue is that we don't do what we know yeah. around food yeah. and health and weight. So uh, we wanted to look at that a, a little more deeply and, and what drives that. And what I've been seeing in, in my own life is how the nature of the mind is to, uh, what we were saying last week, is to see life through certain personal filters of what's occurring in life, connecting dots in my mind. If, if this happens, then it means that. And it's that meaning that I give to my thinking about the situation that then the mind says, this is a problem, and it starts that cycle of, if this is a problem, then the solution is, and it, it often is food. Uh, you know, I, I can't quite undo what's been done, but I can do something to feel better. So I, I look for food. Yeah, when you say, this is a problem, then all kinds of feelings start to arise. And we don't want to feel those feelings. We don't like them, so we go to food often to try to calm the water, yeah, to yeah. try to find relief. And it works, you know. We do. We can feel more calm um, when that dopamine starts kicking in, <laughs> but then we have all the side effects of what kicked the dopamine in, <laughs> and so of what we ate that we know wasn't great for the body. Yeah. 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 So to go back to that little example I gave last week about peach juice being on the counter and how when Connie just pointed it out to me because I don't see stuff like that the way she does. And how as soon as she said it, my mind connected dots that said, you did something wrong. It, it didn't really kind of zoom out and try and figure out oh, is there a problem here? It immediately went to kind of a knee-jerk response. You've done something wrong. And then there's the problem. It's defined. You did something wrong, juice on the, on the counter, and it goes through this whole process of, of what it might mean. And so what we're getting at is that what we've been seeing in helping to unwind um, this uh, habitual turning to food, find relief from the feelings, is that if we understand that if we're starting to feel anxiety, or we're starting to feel fear quite often, or if we're starting to feel anger or any kind of negative emotion, it's quite often that the mind, in our minds, we've connected the situation that's in front of us through the filters of our conditioned thinking. Say more about that. What what do you mean through the filters? Yeah. So we all have our path and we always wanted to get it right. I always wanted to get it right. So the mind didn't want to have a problem when I was really young, you know. My mother pointed something out and said, Don't do that again. Then I took on this thinking that I can do things wrong that will upset the apple cart. But when I'm young, you see, if I'm dealing with uh, something that my mother isn't happy about, 
the way I'm connecting the dots is that if I don't get it right and avoid doing what upsets her, then I could lose this relationship. I mean, I, my, my little mind never goes there, but it's kind of what is put in place. And so as I get older and develop more, I still have that connection that if I upset somebody, then I could lose the relationship. So it's, you still have that connection to condition thinking. Yeah, so the condition thinking is that I can't upset anybody or my life will fall apart. That's a big burden. <laughs> it is. A, so my coping mechanism was to be a real people pleaser. And that people pleasing is not a good foundation for healthy relationships. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can be real good at the beginning, you know, everybody's happy, but you know, if I'm pleasing people, then I'm doing things that are creating problems for myself. You know, I don't have enough time to do what I've said I was going to do for them and all that kind of thing. So what has really changed so much for me is that when I notice these feelings coming up of uh, like occurred with the uh, with the peach juice, that feeling now. It's starting to be like a little alarm clock waking me up saying, wait, where you're going with this may not be accurate. And so it's really sweet because I've been at this long enough now, four, five, six years, that as it comes up, um, it almost starts to go down on its own. Oh, that's great. And then there's the clear seeing that coming up, that arising is seeing the situation through my conditioned thinking. But I've gone through the cycle often enough now that I've seen that following the conditioned thinking to I've got to fix this some way, she's upset with me, isn't actually true. And if I really ask her, are you upset? What would you say? No, I was not upset. upset at all. No. But it looked like that because of my conditioned thinking. So I've begun to question and recognize that often when this kind of feeling of anxiety, of fear, of I've got to fix something, there's a problem here, it starts to arise. Nine times out of ten, it isn't true. So now a new habit is being formed. This is the beauty of what they call neuroplasticity in the mind. We created these patterns, these um, neural pathways when we were young. We connected dots and we keep seeing life through those patterns, through those filters that when we were young served us. We did need to keep mom happy to survive, but it's not the case anymore. So the beauty is when we begin to understand the nature of the mind and how it has kind of a negative bias to see a problem, even when it isn't necessarily there, because it's better to be safe than to be kind of lackadaisical about it and boom, you, you, you get blindsided. So yeah, that's what's been happening for me is that I've been able to kind of not get as distracted, market is caught by a strong feeling coming up. And in that, kind of hold it more loosely. What Connie will often say, and these feelings come up, hold it loosely. And in that, it starts to come back down. And that gives me the vision, the, the greater clarity that takes those filters out of the way. So I can see more clearly, oh, it's peace just on the counter. Let me get a, a cloth and wipe it up. It's that simple. But with all those feelings going on, it's not that simple. My mind's thinking, should I defend myself? Well, I can't tell you all the different ramifications of these simple things have had for me. So, you know, what we want to point out is if you're reaching for food and you're not hungry, Maybe check in and see if there's a feeling. Because that feeling of anxiety or fear or something's wrong and I've got to find relief from this feeling 
there's probably just some conditioned thinking going on that when we recognize that, we can clear our minds, allow the mind to settle. And with that, we can make the healthier choices around food. That's certainly been my experience with changing my food habits is when I can see that um, this feeling that I can't seem to resolve is having me reach for food. All that I need to do is kind of lean into that feeling because in leaning into that feeling, I don't know, it just gets clear and kind of subsides. Yeah, and we'll talk more next week about what leaning in can look like and how simple it is. So we'll take another step. Now, recipes. We're doing a seven-day juice cleanse, and so we are juicing up a storm, <laughs> and we're going to send you two new juice recipes that we've created you can create your own just as easily. Beets and such. Yeah, beets and Fabulous. such. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you'll see soon. Thanks for joining.